The Salish Sea. This world-famous waterway, a system of interconnected marine ecosystems, and its web of upstream links to rivers, forest, mountains, and glaciers, sustains a huge abundance of life. Not only the creatures of the sea, air, and land, but us too, the people who live here. My name is Chris Morgan. As a wildlife ecologist, filmmaker, and host of the podcast, The Wild, I'm endlessly curious about life in our region and the mysteries of how it all fits together. Kelp forests. Just like the forests on land, these giant ribbons of majestic underwater greenery are teeming with life, providing food and shelter to thousands of species from zooplankton to salmon, from the mighty and iconic orcas to a little known superstar called the Pinto abalone. Not only that, these kelp forests connect to each other from Asia to the Americas to create massive interconnected ecosystems called kelp highways. Yes, kelp highways have played a critical role in the history of human migration. In a lot of ways, kelp is the bedrock that has allowed the Pacific Northwest to thrive. The Coast Salish people know this. They've lived alongside these kelp forests for tens of thousands of years. So I'm headed out to meet Casey Finkbonner, a Coast Salish fisherman from the Lummi Nation, to find out more about how this blade of seaweed could create all this life. My oldest son, he's 15, his name's Phoenix. My younger son is 12, his name's King. Are they following in your footsteps with the fishing then? <laughs> they definitely follow in my footsteps. Even if I tried to not let them, they still are gonna follow in my footsteps, so. But no, that's, they, their eyes light up every time we go home and that's all they wanna do. We go fishing, we go fishing. They fish without me now, so. It all starts with the kelp. I feel everything starts with the kelp. Even when we're when we're diving for cucumbers, sea, sea urchins, everything, we're targeting kelp, we're looking for kelp. But even with the with the salmon, the salmon travel through the through the kelp, you'll see the killer whales rushing up in through the, the kelp, hmm. trying to scare the salmon out so they could feed. When you're out here in the San Juan Islands and you see all that kelp, you just know as a diver, what that's going to entail when you dive down underneath, because you see all the different species. You see the urchins, you see the cucumbers, you see the fish hiding out in the kelp. You see the richness of the kelp. The, the kelp has to survive for everything else in the ecosystem to survive. Casey's passion for the kelp and the systems of life it supports moves me deeply. I want to learn more. So I'm headed to Seattle Aquarium to meet Ryan Krim, a native tribal member and Puget Sound Restoration Fund biologist, to talk about a tiny creature with one big foot and mother of pearl shell that he and other partners are working to restore. Why? Because the Pinto abalone are a key species in protecting kelp. Abalone are really cool creatures. They are super charismatic and uh, they are native to the uh, Northeast Pacific coastline from Alaska down to all the way to California. And uh, you know, they were once quite abundant here in the Puget Sound. They've declined quite a bit um, from uh, Southeast Alaska to Washington. And here in Washington State, which is where we, our work is focused, uh, populations have dropped by you know over 95 percent. You know, what? 95 percent. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's hard to find a, a, a wild pinto abalone these days. You know, when you look out on the waters of the Puget Sound and, and the Salish Sea, you know, people think of salmon and orcas, and they're hugely important, iconic species in this area. And there's so much more going on under the surface, and you know, there are these these super important habitats that. Uh, that are really foundational, you know, habitats for this area that are kelp forests. And uh, pinto abalone are a hugely important part of that ecosystem as well. To illustrate his point, 
Ryan takes me to see Seattle Aquarium's Pinto Abalone Nursery. Here, baby abalone are raised and cared for until they're strong enough to thrive in the Salish Sea on their own, helping the population recover. It's amazing to witness this creature as it chomps marine algae and stray kelp fronds off the sea floor, effectively cleaning areas for new kelp to anchor and grow. They're like little master gardeners for these kelp forests that are home for so many species. Once these babies grow to about an inch long, the aquarium divers will release abalone annually, joining the team that is working to recover this endangered species. PSRF, Puget Sound Restoration Fund, the organization I work for, you know, is working with Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. We work with a lot of other partners. You know, the Seattle Aquarium recently has joined us in this big effort to, um, to grow out juvenile abalone. But, you know, we work with Coast Salish tribes um, almost probably more closely than any other groups, you know, around the Puget Sound. They're hugely important stakeholders for the, the marine resources that we're working to preserve and, and restore. And, uh, you know, it's all tied together and all of these creatures are related, you know, and, and important for the habitats. And, uh, and we're part of that as well. So the Pinto abalone help create the habitat for kelp highways, and that allows the kelp to do the work of supporting the larger ecosystem, from shading and cooling the ocean floor, to sequestering excess carbon, to feeding the teams of life underwater. It's no exaggeration to say that without kelp, there is no life in the Salish Sea. Whether it's orcas, crabs, or harbor seals, we need kelp to support these gifts. I learned this from Valerie Seagrest, an amazing native nutrition educator, and her husband, Louis Ungaro, a native fisherman, both members of the Muckleshoot tribe. What is the kelp highway? I think of it as this beautiful forest of bullip kelp that folks have traveled along uh, throughout the Salish Sea. And just like any forest, it provides so much medicine and uh, habitat and food for the food system. <laughs> it's, it's just this incredible piece to, uh, to the chain, to the whole entire food chain or, or web of life. That, that's what the Kelp Highway is all about. The Kelp Highway project involving so many you know, Coast Salish uh, communities is not anything new. We've always been a part active in our food system and helping to maintain our resources um, and not just taking but also figuring out some way to give back and so I think it's just sustaining our culture and a good reminder that we are a living culture. We're not a people of the past and that our ancestors have been doing this for thousands of years. I feel really hopeful for the future because tribes have prioritized education and youth. And more and more priorities are being shifted into getting them outside, active in their environment, raising up a generation of natural resource managers that come with this traditional ecological knowledge. And, and so I feel incredible hope when I see youth out being active, doing things that their ancestors have done. It's my remedy, you know, is to, is to really witness youth uh, getting involved and excited about it. And that empowers them because it helps them to remember who they are and where they come from. And I think that's, that's really the medicine, you know, that we're all after. Having lived here for tens of thousands of years, the Coast Salish people know best what we need for a healthy Salish sea. It is our duty to listen, learn, and celebrate this next generation of leaders working alongside them to do what's necessary for generations to come. Casey, Phoenix, King, Ryan, and Valerie are just some of the brilliant and dedicated folks leading the way and giving us hope. And if they see a path forward towards a healthy Salish Sea, then hey, that's reason to celebrate and participate. <laughs>